Welcome to the Google Cloud Security Showcase, a special web series where we'll focus on security use cases that customers can solve with Google Cloud. My name is Aiden, and I'm a software engineer at Google Cloud. Today, we'll be walking through one of the top questions we get from customers. How can I isolate my containerized workloads? Containers are a great way to deploy and manage applications, but they don't always provide the level of isolation that we need. GKE Sandbox is a feature that can help provide defense and depth for untrusted workloads. It provides an isolated execution environment for each container, similar to a virtual machine, in order to help prevent privilege escalations and container breakouts. In this demo, I'll use GK Sandbox and other features like network policy to isolate some container workloads. To get started, let's create a new GKE cluster. When creating our cluster, we're going to ensure that we have network policy enabled. Network policy allows us to control what network resources pods have access to. While GK Sandbox can provide defense in depth, a good network policy is critical for isolating workloads on the same cluster. We'll also enable workload identity, which is the security best practice for authenticating GK workloads to Google services. Workload identity helps us implement the principle of least privilege across all our containers. This will take a couple minutes and we'll come back when it's ready. Once the cluster is created, we can now create a GK Sandbox node pool. To do this, we first select the container optimized OS with container D image, and then check the enable sandbox with GVisor box. GVisor is an open source isolation technology used by GK Sandbox. It provides a user space kernel to intercept system calls, reducing a container's interaction with the node and the attack surface. This node pool can be used to run regular pods as well as sandbox pods, but regular pods will only be scheduled on these nodes with an explicit annotation. This will take a minute or two. When the node pool is ready, we'll drop down to the command line to create some Kubernetes resources. I'll be using Google Cloud Shell. The first thing I'll do is create a separate namespace for the sandboxed applications. Namespaces are a great way to organize related services and can provide some security benefits. I'll call this namespace sandboxed. Next, I'll define a restrictive network policy by default, preventing anything inside this namespace from initiating network connections. Now let's deploy a sandbox pod. To do this, we'll deploy a pod in our namespace with the runtime class name set to GVisor. This pod will be automatically scheduled to the node pool above that we created. I'm also providing explicit limits in the resource spec, otherwise this pod may be able to consume arbitrary resources and negatively affect other containers. To validate that the pod is sandboxed, I'm going to run kubectl exec to start a shell in the pod and inspect the execution environment. We can see here that the pod is interacting with a synthetic environment and not the host kernel. This layer of isolation makes container breakouts more difficult. We can also validate that the network policy has been applied appropriately. Attempting to reach an external service fails, as does attempting to reach the Google metadata service. Finally, I'll expose a sandbox service via an ingress. Here I'm deploying an auto-scaled Nginx group with an ingress configuration. These will be scheduled onto the new node pool and can be accessed publicly just like normal pods. In summary, GK Sandbox is a great way to add defense and depth for container isolation and supplements critical features like network policy. Check out the link to learn more. Thank you for tuning in. Please visit cloud.google.com security for more content from Google Cloud experts. Mm -hmm.